Okay guys, so welcome back to the H5P <laughs> Yeah, we are in the H5P Thousand protocols, thousand tools to master If you wanna understand completely networking Summarize CCA, right? <laughs> okay, so we're in the part number two of trade route This uh, lovely toolkit we have uh, we already explained in um, details now we're gonna focus on Wireshark we're gonna focus on how it works with a demonstration so yeah at this point I assume you understand how UDP works in trade route how trade route using UDP uh, in order to fulfill the goal the power of ICNP type 11 which is the time to leave exceeded ICNP type 3, code 3 destination unreachable, port unreachable as we already explained and the power of TTL at this point uh, you need to understand what is a TTL, how it's working I'm not going to explain how, how this works you will see uh, some variants of TTL within the trade route tool as is so yeah just check it out before in case you don't you know that you are not aware about all TTL and what else we have here you know you love uh, <laughs> I love to justify everything I explained so I want to justify today the trade route with the RFC 3093 and as we already explained too, the ports, the range ports, the range UDP ports, I don't like this, the range UDP ports um, trade route juicing from the very beginning to uh, what I'm doing to the end, right? the beginning to the end uh, in terms of uh, 33434 till 33534 this means trade route within iOS just can handle a th uh, hundred hops no more okay great so let me show you guys the topology I have for this demonstration so yeah this is um, normal enter enterprise environment so our goal is for from HQ2 which is here within our enterprise we want to reach one IP from the internet 0 to right which is hosted somewhere in, in, the, in the internet and uh, yeah, basically this we're gonna use a source. Let me move this guy here, like it's in the internet, right? And the source will be the HQ2 with the Ethernet zero, and then we're gonna type the IP address. I didn't memorize it. We're gonna get in in the CLI and we want to check it out okay so um, yeah so we're using for Ethernet 0, 0 we're using this right great so we're gonna verify first reachability and then we're going to identify whether the route towards 201.1.0.2 it's going through the ISP1 from HQ1 or towards the ISP2 to reach it so that's the human question you know in English so we're going to find out with the networking so yeah let's work with, uh, with this so we're gonna ping 
201, 102, source 2602, one repetition. As you can see, we can reach it, right? You can successfully reach it. We're pinging, we're verifying reachability here from here. Okay, great. So now we're going to identify the path using the powerful thread route. With thread route, we're going to copy paste our destination. And then we're going to use some features they're providing. They're providing the source address we're going to use for this purpose. In this case, we're going to use 10602, which is the interface 00. zero. This is not going to work. Oh, guys, I forgot the, the space, yeah? Then let's question mark. Okay, what's happening? Let's question mark. And besides source, we're going to use the proof feature. Okay, proof translated in what I already explained means the amount here it's saying specify the number of proofs per hop proof means the specify specifying the number of UDP mal proof packets sending per hop towards the destination by default is three right uh, we're going to use one in the sake uh, for the sake of this uh, demonstration to avoid the uh, rubbish in the white shark okay so prove one so we can see clearly let move this baby to this point mm, let's type a whiteboard okay yeah better view right so sorry guys so <laughs> I ended up using the same okay let me move here okay so oh sorry 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 so let's put this here yeah this is better okay so first up 1060 oh is this guy obviously Citronet 101 so let's verify this uh, let's get into the distribute switch we are inside the distribute switch so our Ethernet 00, zero is the right this is our first hop the second hop is 10501 I assume is the Ethernet 00, zero of HQ1 let's get into HQ1 well I already executed, but uh, let's execute it again. Zero zero is ten fifty oh one, which is the second hop. One, two hops, and the third hop, it's the Ethernet, which is one oh two oh one one zero one. How we identify this from HQ one? we can notice that the last hop is second octet one so I assume it going is facing upstream upstream from Ethernet serial one which is here so I assume it's going for, uh, towards the ISP one okay so let's show the explanation of this command in Wireshark, okay. So uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna open my um, cap files. Um, for yeah. So why why I'm opening two Wireshark's? or two different uh, capture packets basically because if you go into the diagram you need to identify what is going on in this link and this link because you own the you own the enterprise right so 
if you see this this is not enough because you you are not able to see what's going on here so I will show you both Wireshark that's that's even better so uh, yeah there's um, let me okay so this is a lot of output in this Wireshark so I'm going to use IP address then I can use pretty much any IP address I want as a source so in this case I'm going to use my real source from HQ2 and then th you can see just the output generated from this host so as you can see here um, okay let's translate this the trade route as we know uh, it sends a UDP packet at the very beginning and the malform packet of 33434 in the destination okay not at the source port it's at the destination we're gonna see it it's a packet 310 as you see frame 310 the destination port starts at 33434 okay so let me open a notepad and then we already see now that 3434 it's our first destination port to our first next hop as you can see so 10602 which is my HQ2 towards the final destination it's sending a packet to uh, discover the trace to discover the route but what is um, the cool feature here that in the header of a layer 3 it's any time to leave 1 okay so why we're using why trade route using time to leave 1 okay so if we're going back to the main whiteboard we said that uh, the main justification of this video is the RFC 3093 so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna open my web browser and then I'm gonna type RFC oops, sorry RFC 1393 right and then you can see the trade route using an IP option that's crazy old guys really this information it's like 93 it's old but I mean we're learning like now today let me show you what day is today that's within a Cisco language show clock this is our day today or Friday January the 5th okay yeah early in the morning yeah so we're learning in 2018 stuff from 1993 whatever that's how that works so if you just trying to find TTL stuff let's read the quick this saying basically the existing trade route operates by sending out the packets with a time to leave of one okay this is the explanation why if you were asking okay Jorge so why the TTL is one at the beginning because the creators of this tool already explaining in the RFC 3093 in January 1993 it's kind of sounds kind of like tricky that's the answer. Then let's keep reading. The net, the first cop then sends back an ICMP error message. Okay. So as soon as the the source is sending a packet of TTL of one, which we already know is a UDP malform packet, the first cop will send back an ICMP error message, which is an TTL expired error message type 11 so let's see this the first cop sends back an error message indicating the packet could not be forwarded forwarded 
because the TTL expired. Simple. Plain English, simple. So if we go in back to the Wireshark, we can see that as soon as I get send the malform packet, I get the I, re I receive an ICMP packet with the time to leave exceeded, which is the type. If we go into the ICMP header, we can see that it's type 11, time to leave exceeded. Ah, oh, lovely and amazing, and so on. So as soon as I get this, I print it in my CLI and I say, okay, I know the first hop, so I now, now I'm sending a packet with TTL of 2. Okay, so I send me as a T1060 O2 sending another malform packet, but now with the TTL 2. Wow, magic, guys, really, I love this. That's so cool, right? So, going to the physical diagram, as soon as he got... Okay, this is my f my first cup. Let's use red. Okay, so I know that this is my first cup, and I print it. I send a TTL to one, two. Who is? How can I know? As soon as he replies at ICMP type 11, and I print it. What I'm doing? So I got the ICMP packet from, as you can see, the first ICMP packet was sent by the distribute switch, 1060.0.254, as we can see here, is the core switch, you see, and then when we send the time to leave 2, then the 1050.0.1 answering, which is the HQ1, HQ1. 1051 answering dude your packet it succeeded this error message make us print this in the in the screen okay I have first swap I want to send three so that's the logic of trace route one by one till the morning comes right <laughs> one by one till he's reaching the destination so the third packet first second third packet time to leave three magic so we're going to the diagram so it's uh, when I use uh, yellow one two three so in the number three hop the third hop it's already our destination so the destination will answer with another type of error message but in this time we'll reply with a time to leave sorry with an ICMP type 3 code 3 error message let's go back to the RFC let's keep reading what they saying the packet the packet is then resend with the TTL of 2 as we already saw and the second hop returns the TTL TTL expired the same ICMP error message. This process continues on until the destination is reached. The purpose behind this is to record the source of each ICMP TTL exceeded message to provide a trace of the path the packet took to reach the destination. Simple, easy, clear so after this between this inform between this and this here I should add to finish the trace route the des the final destination will be reply with another ICMP error message called type 3 code 3 to identify the trace route is closing even the RFC is not explaining this but the Wireshark do, does. So the Wireshark does, as you can see, in the third packet, I send in time to leave three, but it's already reached by the destination, right? And the destination, 
is replying to the source which is 10602 is saying okay dude you reach me right let me put this okay you reach me but you cannot reach my port this port is unreachable because the port you are trying to reach in my socket you're trying to reach is not reachable okay so when I receive an ICMP packet let let go to the header that will be more interesting ICMP header type 3 code 3 means destination unreachable port unreachable because there's a thousand well not a thousand but uh, there are more than one code and more than one type in ICMP as you already know so this code in particular is saying like you're not able to reach my port so when you get the third hop here he will answer with the ICMP sorry guys let's use uh, yeah blue blue is the ICMP type 3 it's replaying here here and here saying dude I don't gonna open this port to you he doesn't care really he doesn't care whether the port is open or no or, or not he already received the ICMP type 3 so the ICMP the ICMP error message type 3 is translated in the trace route tool at the end that means finish and that's it so as you can see this white shark is uh, this white shark is this line and this line I don't need it to show it to you guys because with this one is enough but at the beginning of the video I told you that I want to show you so this is the second the second wire shark so let's filter based on the IP source so as you can see you only have one piece of the whole thing you sniffer one packet which one the second packet I know I know it's the second packet because the port is the second port 33435 is the second port so this is going towards the destination and this guy replied 10501 who is 10501 the HQ1 so this is sniffer from this belongs to this which just only sniffer this packet, the answer, and the last packet. Obviously, this sniffer doesn't have all the packets because he does, like, he didn't know what happened here at the very beginning. Makes sense, right? So, well, I just wanted to show it to you that uh, this two is pretty much the same as this four packet. So, let me put it in this like. It's kind of like, sort of like this. It's sort of like this, and you don't have these two because, basically, it's in the other side of your network. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna attach these files. These files, what you're seeing. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the um, comment section below. As download, you can go to my blog h5p.com and then you can download this uh, sniffer packets. You can download this topology, and yeah, you can pretty much recreate it if you're up to like. You can see in details more extra stuff such as I don't know thousand things like headers, header. I mean the header tree, the diagram, the whatever, everything. So. Yeah, guys, I hope this video was informi informative uh, to you. And let me know if you have any questions. Okay, keep in touch.